She was born on the day of Bastille, this now martyred figure that shall forever be immortalized in memory, bronze and steel. A suffragette slave of empire that cared not to bow or kneel, and certainly had no intention of being crushed and damned under the masculine heel. She quickly broke free from the idea of wearing a yeoman's yoke, then decided to dismantle the privileged hierarchy spoke by spoke. A proletarian protégé of the bourgeoisie, this silver-tongued Shakespeare had the management of a maitre d' and quickly became the Amazonian's queen bee. Carrying the silken velvet banner of purple, white and green, these warriors threw their tricular spanner into the British Empire's imperial machine. The politician said that this balsa wooden Bloomsbury brigade would be better serving a master at home by making babies bread and marmalade. It wasn't long before the suffragettes rewarded the minister's broken promise by rallying mob and mass, burning and bombing London's West End into pieces of broken glass. In prison they were violated and force-fed until their stomachs burst and bled. On release they issued a declaration of war, telling Asquith that they will fight for freedom until they were dead. The press promoted them as a legion of lesbian ladettes, what the government and the world didn't realize. By stabbing these suffragettes in the back, they had now entered into a deadly game of Russian roulette.